This is the 2026 Kia EV9 and it's among the new crop of electric vehicles which are coming out with the Tesla style NACS charging port right from the factory. So I'm at this Tesla supercharger right out of New York City and we are going to do a 10 to 80% charging test and really find out if having a NACS port right from the factory impacts its road tripping capabilities, charging speeds and all of that. So let's quickly walk through how to actually charge the Kia EV9 at this Tesla supercharger. So I'm going to open the port. So it has the native NACS port right from the factory. And to initiate the charging session, I have to go to the Tesla app on my phone here. It's one extra step to do it through the app. I prefer plug-in charge, but the EV9 will get plug-in charge by the end of this year. And that should make charging significantly easier as it will sort of eliminate this step of having to deal with apps in the first place. So we are in Harrison, New York. So I'm just going to click on charge here. Then we are at stall 3A. I have to unlock the adapter. And now I'm going to go ahead and just pull. Oh, it says charging error. It says plug the cable back into the post and try again. Let's just see if it charges at all. It says that the adapter is not unlocked, but it clearly is unlocked. So I'm just going to plug it in and see if it charges. So we've just changed our parking spot here at the Tesla supercharger station because we ran into some issues with the previous stall. This has never happened to me before. Tesla superchargers have always worked seamlessly, but that stall right here had some problem. It had an issue unlocking the adapter and then we plugged in. It was not giving me any power. It was charging very slowly. We waited for some time for the charging speed to ramp up, but it did not ramp up at all. So we've parked it at a different spot and now we are going to just do the whole process again. So uh, we are at this Harrison station. This is the Tesla app. I'm going to unlock the 3B adapter and I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and see if this time it works. Okay, so now it's initiating the communications protocol between the charger and the vehicle. So it should start charging pretty soon. I just turned the car on and off and that made the charging work for some reason. I have no idea why that happened. I have no idea why it failed for the second time, but turning the car on and off worked. So now it's finally pulling some kilowatts and we'll see how it progresses. It started at 12%, we're at 14% now. It's pulling up to 126 kilowatts and it's, it says 36 minutes to 80%. So the EV9 shares its platform with the Hyundai Ioniq 9. They both run on the Hyundai eGMP platform. This one is a little bit different from the Ioniq 9. So this gets the 99.8 kilowatt hour battery, which is the large battery option. This is the GT line all wheel drive trim. So it gets about 280 miles of range. There are also other trims which get more than 300 miles of range. Uh, the Ionic 9 gets an even bigger battery pack. It gets a 110 kilowatt hour pack for some extra range. But both these cars are really good when it comes to range. In fact, we had a lot of trouble running this down to 10% because even in sport mode, it was averaging at 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So these Hyundai EVs are super, super efficient. This one is really fast. So despite being a six seater, it weighs 7,000 pounds, but it still has a zero to 60 time of just five seconds. That's thanks to dual motors on the front and the rear axle. So that means 300 179 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque. It's really one of the nicest people movers in the US. The reason you're seeing this jacket and this jacket suspended from the window right here is because the lighting is extremely harsh. So we are doing this so that we can actually look at the screen and record all the data we need about this charging test. We are at 21%. The EV9 is pulling 126 kilowatts. It can do much better theoretically because it, it's capable of 350 kilowatts. And this supercharger right here is capable of delivering 325 kilowatts. But I think this station is pretty busy. There are a lot of EVs which are charging and that might be the reason why the speeds are not going above 126 kilowatts. So we're at about 37%. It's still holding flat at about 126 kilowatts, which is actually kind of impressive because it's holding that speed at a pretty flat charging curve, which is good but it's also not peaking at the speeds i thought it would peak which was like more than 200 kilowatts so this spot right here is where i previously plugged in but 
it was a very buggy experience. It showed that the adapter was not getting unlocked and the app was having errors and then the car was not pulling any charge at all. It was stuck at 30 kilowatts. But now there's another Hyundai EV uh, just charging at the same spot and I think he's doing pretty well. I mean, the owner is not in the car, but it is charging. And we met another guy here who also faced some issues. So this charging station right here is definitely not the smoothest. But I have to mention that the EV9, I've been driving this for a week. I've used Tesla superchargers and the experience has been pretty seamless. So we've hit 80%. This was a 12 to 80% charging test. It took about 36 minutes for us to get from 12 to 80% and then it cost us $42. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the session. It was pretty smooth actually, because it held 126 kilowatts of charging speeds all the way. It was a flat charging curve. So I would say charging the Kia EV9 at Tesla Superchargers is very easy. This is a big battery car. It can go to 180 miles and road tripping in the EV9 with access to Tesla superchargers with an NACS port right from the factory is super easy. But if you encounter some bugs, those I think will be ironed out in the long term. I'm Subrat Kothari for Inside EVs. Like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel.